Hello, this is Dr. J back with some more Let's Play Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition. I just got back from a long hike over some moderately rough terrain, and I'm feeling very tired, so if I'm a little more out of it or derpier than usual, that would be the reason why, just to let everybody know. But nonetheless, I'm looking forward to some more Class of Heroes. Even if it's going to be a bit of a sleepy episode. Alright, so by the law of symmetry, we're going to have to go through this nonsense again. I mean, I say nonsense, but it's not so bad. We've gone through much worse patterns than this. In this very, uh, this very floor, in fact. I'm looking at you. Uh, annoying thing with the fake magic keys and the one-way doors. Actually, a thought occurs. Which is, I'm not 100%ing this floor anyway, because I'm not going to go through all of those right now. So I'll explore some more of this floor, this part at least. But uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the, I don't know, the current side, which is the opposite of the original side. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through its fake magic key gauntlet as well. We'll see, but probably not. Treasure chest. Medusa's eye. Oh, oh, it was a devilish curse, and it made Wendy lose stamina. Well, that's no bueno. Isn't that the second time she's lost stamina? What's her stamina at now? Uh, 97. Okay, that doesn't sound so bad. 98, 97. Pretty sure she lost it once before, but maybe she only lost a single point this time. So, I believe that's the first devilish curse trap that we've encountered. The traps are getting nastier as we get deeper into the dungeons. I'm starting to wonder if I should just always double check Wendy's report. I wonder if the traps have gotten nasty enough that I should do that. Because I think we've got a lot of MP to spare for doing that check. So it's not like we have to be too stingy with it. What the heck? A Vidstone fragment. Let's just immediately use the torch just to get it out of our inventory. Another shattered crucifix. Come on, magic coin. There you go. Oh, a gold coin. Hey, a wyvern whisker. That's as good as another wyvern ticket, which is excellent. Can save us a fair amount of wandering around through labyrinths we've already cleared at times. It's interesting going through this backwards. I feel like this is actually easier than when we went through it forwards. All right, they are in agreement. Though it occurs to me, there is another magic key that I'm trying to find, isn't there? So that I can open that portcullis there. Although obviously we don't need to do it for quick travel through this floor. We already have that. We got that portcullis. So it's not critical if we don't get that other one, I don't think. Grief. 
This fight is taking a surprisingly large number of rounds. We're not taking any damage whatsoever, thanks to the magic barrier, which is every bit as OP as I remembered. Good lord, is it strong. Okay, so now we're back here. Okay, uh... There we go, um... Okay, this is the one area that I missed. Let's go ahead and grab it. It's gonna bug me if we don't, even if we're not getting 100% map completion. They're trying to put us to sleep. It's not working too well for them. Yeah, status effects seem really weak in this game. There's a lot of RPGs where that's true. This seems to be one of them. Status, the status effects can be difficult to balance well because if you make them really good, it's easy for them to be overpowered because status effects can be very strong. So you, you certainly don't want them to just work all the time. But then it's really easy to go too far the other way and make them have such a low success rate that they're basically worthless. And that seems to be about true in this game. We can drop the torn shirt. We're running low on inventory space again. We don't need the shattered mace. Oh, loyal headband plus four. Not as good as a rebel headband plus seven. And I don't think anyone else in the party can even wear it. No, only samurai. Uh, we'll hang on to it so we can sell it. It's probably worth a bit of money. Though I, I don't know how much it's really worth. Maybe not much. Anyway. Alright, we're now approaching this side's magic key gauntlet, I think. Okay, not yet. We've got the endless corridor first. Hey, a level for Akari. Look at that sweet smile. I feel like with these portraits, everybody has much happier, friendlier level up smiles. What a terrible level. What a terrible level. Only six hit points, lost faith, didn't gain anything. Well, those kind of levels happen sometimes. She did learn new magic. Quake and Voltus. Okay, those, those are good ones to know. I am happy enough. I won't have her forget either of them. Didn't I have her forget a lower level one? I feel like she did. Was it a first level one that I had her forget? Yeah, yeah, because she, I, No, no, no. No, it wasn't. I don't even remember. It doesn't really matter. Oh, boy. Well, we'll do the first couple of these because it just straight up tells you what the... What the correct magic key is. I don't know if there's some kind of hint for that last one. I'm still salty that it was the last possible one. What kind of crap luck is that? That's so statistically unlikely. By the way, speaking of statistically unlikely, I was running a game of Traveler, which is a science fiction tabletop RPG for some of my friends earlier today. And I had a friend roll 66666 on 5d6. She rolled all sixes on 5d6. Do you have any idea how statistically unlikely that is? That is like 1 in 7,767 or something like that. It's insanely unlikely. But it was a completely legit roll. There is no doubt of the legitimacy of this roll whatsoever. So that was pretty crazy. I went ahead and took a screenshot of it because it was <laughs> so unlikely. That was pretty cool. Seeing crazy stuff like that. Is it just me or... Are these actually in the same position? Which would mean that it should be the second to last southern key here. 
if it's in the same position again. Right? It would be this one. So it should be... Oh, right, because it was in a dark zone. So they do seem consistent. It should be the second to last southern one in the next one, too. Oh, and that one doesn't have a one-way door. These probably also didn't have one-way doors, and I was an idiot for thinking that they did and taking the long way around. Not that the long way was really all that long. So it wasn't a big deal. But if it is indeed symmetrical, it should be this one. And indeed it is. Okay. So we were able to do it after all because of the symmetry. Beautiful. That should mean that, yes, and now this portcullis is open. Good enough, not 100%ing this right now. But maybe I should at least go down this hallway. I can do that much at least. Oh, by the way, anti-magic zone, irritating. Okay, we'll at least have Floator on. And how about Lumior? Oh, right. Radar has no... Oh, he does have magic. Just super less than he should. That's odd. Shouldn't he have all psionic MP because of that ill-advised mana swap I did? Whatever. As long as his MP aren't permanently at that lower level, that would be stupid. If something caused that to happen, that would borderline be a reload. Yeah, let's just grab this and then move on. I think Ridge... No, he, he has insta-moves because he, uh... He got a level up. He has a single insta-move. And that's a good time saver. There we go. Technically not 100%, but... We got everything that was interesting, for sure. Okay. One of these that has a lot of dark zones. Oh, and we're in the center now. Cool. There was another center that was pretty similar to this that was sectioned off into different areas by dark zones. Oh, okay, there's a door. Alright, well, we found the entrance to the labyrinth already, and you know what? Let's just go straight there. That doesn't mean we're not going to explore the center, we are, but there's no reason not to go to the labyrinth first. No reason at all. The order doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and make a save. All right, and there she is. Karat. Tlo. So I'm gonna guess Tlo is the blonde one with her eyes closed that we've seen a couple times. We ran into her and she silently walked away and then we saw her fighting Nina. I'm guessing that's Tlo and she's like the leader of the life golems. I'm just guessing. All right, well, get wrecked then, Karat. I will happily obliterate you. Go ahead and focus. Attack. Uh, since you have some MP, go ahead and throw a Shimmer at her. Oh, 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 oh. He's regaining MP because he has that MP regen ability. That's what's going on. Okay. Wow, that thing's really coming in handy then. I'd forgotten he even has that. But that is a great way to recover from that uh, MP swap mishap. So you throw a Shimmer at her and you throw a Quake. Not a lot of damage. That did better. Okay, the magic barrier fell. Oh, she just regained 266 hit points. We're going to have to do at least that much damage just to break through her defenses. Let's keep that magic barrier up. I have a feeling she might hit pretty hard if, if she were to actually hit us. Okay, we're doing good damage. Good. 
Good lord. Are we doing more than 266, though? I hope so. Maybe you should just attack every turn, Grisa. This could end up being an eternal stalemate if we can't outrun her regen. You should probably just attack rather than hiding. We need continuous damage output. We are not outrunning that. She is regening faster than we're even hurting her. The magic barrier is still up, so let's have Ridge pitch in and toss out a, a Psybeam. Uh, try a bubble. There we go, we got her. Wow, Wendy did insane damage with that crossbow hit. You were tough, Karat. Uh, thanks to the magic wall, we didn't have much to fear from your attacks, but you were durable. Bye, Karat. You, uh, you made a better effort of it than your sisters. We can say that much for sure. Okay. A lot of poor Pelisses in this labyrinth. Hmm, quite a few enemies. Dog God Servant. Well, it's just uh, Blazing Fist them. Excellent. Oh boy, Teleport Maze. And we don't have any Insta moves available. Oh my god. I mean, eventually he would gain a level. And uh, <laughs> then we'd have an insta, insta move available. I wonder how far he is from a level. Probably pretty far. I knew it was only a matter of time before we got a teleport maze. And as I said, we don't even have any ability to mark the map to show which teleport goes to which we would just have to try to memorize it. And I'm way too tired for that right now. That is not a thing that is happening. Okay, we're back at the start. Portcullis is everywhere, except there, but that just goes back to the start. Nowhere to go except the teleporter, then. Do we want northwest or southeast? I'll try northwest. Okay, that takes us to here. Alright, southeast. This one's wrong. We can say that much. If nothing else, I can memorize it. So, northwest. Okay, northwest, northwest. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I stumbled into another teleporter is what happened. Great. What was that? Southwest? It might be, it might actually be feasible to memorize this if it's just that there's one teleporter in each area that causes you to progress and another that sends you back to the beginning or, you know, something similar to that. So northwest, northwest, southwest is taking us somewhere new. Shine Burris. Dead. Ooh, 
Get out of here, scrubs. Oh, you're big and scary. Alright, level for Radar. Look at that smile. Alright, I'll take a level where you don't lose anything and you get a decent hit point roll. Okay, no teleporter there. Just an anti-magic zone and a teleporter. Concerning. Very concerning. So concerning I want to turn Floator back on. I can imagine them putting you through an anti-magic zone and then getting you with electric tiles. They would do that, make no mistake. They would absolutely do that. Oh, we did it! We did it, guys. We got to the end. That wasn't so bad. At least I assume that's the end. I assume that opens every portcullis. Now, where in here would be the empty 3x3 room that we know must exist, because every labyrinth seems to have one. Although, didn't we fail to find one in the Glacier Labyrinth? So that kind of, uh... That kind of broke the pattern, seemingly. This certainly makes navigating easier. Is it another Shine Burris? Oh, this has a bunch of those orbs in the middle of it. And I'm not seeing that in these others, so maybe that's significant. Or, you know, will become significant in the future. Other than that, we haven't explored the northeast or this one. Oh, that had a teleporter right in the middle of it. It broke the pattern. Interesting. That makes me curious if there's anything else unusual about it. But, seemingly not. Okay, well, I mean, technically we haven't 100%ed it because we haven't explored each and every floor tile. Okay. And presumably, uh, this is requires the special key. Uh, I'm derping. I did say I was very tired. There we go. Okay, as I figured. I'm starting to think in some of these, the empty 3x3 three three room is behind the special key door, like here. But that hasn't been true in a lot of them. A lot of them... The special key door and then empty 3x3 three three room at the end of some puzzles and traps are two separate things. Alright, now we can finish exploring the center. Give me just a sec. I got a text that I want to answer real quick. Apologies for that. Should only take a moment. If my phone will respond in a timely manner. I have a pretty crappy phone. I did not pay much money for it. The idea of spending a thousand dollars on a cell phone is ridiculous to me. Okay. I'm not especially fast on uh, touch screens either. I'm super fast typist on a tactile keyboard. 
I mean very fast, but on a phone, not really. Okay, I have replied. Sorry about that, everybody. But it was one that I didn't want to wait on. Excellent. Uh, one annoying thing about places with so many dark tiles, you have to stop and check the map constantly. Okay, we found the treasure room. I don't trust that, okay, but it's true. Excellent. Good lord, we're spilling into Ridge's inventory now. Huh, good thing we only have to explore the center and then part of the next map, and then we're done. Cook Doni Deary. Uh, let's feed that to... Does anybody have any actual damage on them? Not that I see, so Griza, you're our human trash disposal. She's okay with it. She's always hungry. And she's got a Bahamut metabolism, so she never gets fat. It's a very envious or enviable, very enviable situation. A death hex. Sounds impressive. Oh, the Onigiri we can just give to Griza. Keeper of the Onigiri. Okay, bone dust. We'll put in the item bag. Bacon. Nom nom nom. Okay. Looks like this will just go in a straight line all the way across the map, and sure enough. Alright, let's go ahead and get this area here. No, I don't want to use it. It will drain my stamina. Hmm, I don't have enough for Blazing Fist, so we'll just have to kill them the old-fashioned way. There's a fair number of them, but we can handle it. Man, thanks to Magic Barrier, I hardly need to think about what I'm doing at all. I'm happy that my party is so strong. But man, battles are kind of just a matter of picking my options in the first round of combat and then holding the button down. Not, not especially difficult. Although, this is taking a while. I'll tell you what, Cecily, let's actually do a thing. Hit them with Fireus. Alright, and the last one ran away. Tell your friends what transpired this day. So that they know not to mess with collateral damage. I mean, Class 2B. Collateral damage has basically become a running theme of what I call my uh, adventuring parties. But these, are, these guys are Class 2B. We've established that. Clearly the best class in all the land. Oh, interesting. Just a dinky little area here. Got him. Thank you. 
A smile pot. Clearly the ultimate evil. It must be destroyed. Good. Well done, Akari. The world is a better place without that horror show. Do -do -do. Oh, I forgot to put up the magic barrier. It did not matter. Oh, those are some tall columns. That's kind of cool. What now? Okay. Nothing I need to respond to. Okay. Got a little area down there to grab. Get out of my face! But yeah, it doesn't really take too much thought at the moment. We kind of have a party configuration that's more or less invulnerable at the moment. All right, Cecily gained a level. Look at that charming wink and smile. Don't think it said she gained any new magic this time, sadly. I don't remember if at some point the enemies become tough enough to overcome this party configuration. I just remember, like I said, the first time I played this game, I had a party configuration similar to this one. And for a pretty big chunk of the game, it was really unbeatable. Element of Substitute. Okay, interesting. Well, they're dead. But uh, if at some point it, it reached the point where... Uh... Alright, hidden door. Well done, Radar. Where uh, this strategy, this configuration didn't work anymore and I had to adapt, I don't remember. I almost kind of hope so. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm having a great deal of fun still. I'm very much enjoying myself, but... We, uh... Oh, what the heck? Those things are horrifying. We are currently at a point where battles are super mindless. I don't really need to think about anything, really. Which, on some level, is not a bad thing when you go through as many random encounters as we do in this game. It's good that we can just go through them very quickly and that each one isn't some long, drawn-out, strategically deep fight. Because that would get old when you have this many fights. But, by the same token, hopefully we'll at least encounter some tougher mini-bosses or something. Uh, that girl we just defeated, whose name I've already forgotten, she was a little tougher. Uh, we didn't really have to vary up our strategy too much, particularly, but uh, it actually took us a few rounds to break through her regen rate. The magic barrier prevented her from doing any damage to us. They're trying to hit us with all kinds of status effects. Oh, okay. Well, I was just saying that I kind of wanted a situation where I had to think about what I'm doing, and all of a sudden, my magic barrier guy is asleep on me. Uh, let's see. Despeller is now what I want. Right, I want a white magic. Uh, does something here wake people up? Do I have a spell to wake people up? Oh, okay, it's a level 1 spell. Wake. Easy enough. There we go. Alright, Ridge is now awake. Now, the magic barrier is still up. Okay, it broke. Uh, but, since it was still up, it did still protect us from some damage. 
Uh, let's go ahead and cure Wendy's fear next. But hey, I'm actually having to think a little bit about what I'm doing. That's nice. Perfect. Oh, they even broke through the magic barrier. Look at him go. Oh, and now Griza needs Awoken. Good lord. Suddenly I was complaining that the fights were too mindless, and now I'm having to deal with all kinds of stuff. Alright, well, go ahead and wake up Griza next, son. Okay, good. Alright, my party formation is back to the way I like it. Yeah, we had to think a little bit about that fight. Just a little. Alright, that one took a bit of effort, didn't it? You know, I might as well include the the dark zone in that zigzag pattern, huh? Not yet. All right, some green lanterns. Give them a good old breath attack. And that takes care of them. Wide open areas like this, as I've said, they don't take too long to explore, usually. Unless there's some kind of real weird gimmick. Oh, that's quite the group. But we have initiative. I was considering using Blazing Fist, but... Ah, let's do it anyway. Even if we do have initiative. There's a Skull Knight among them. Have we encountered a Skull Knight before? No, that guy's new. And he got one-shotted. But he was new. Oh, the Amos Amethyst Stalls. Amethystals did not get one-shotted. Well, I'm sure this will finish the job. Well done, crew. Alright, we have a lot of stuff now. We better start identifying. Look at all this. It's ridiculous. Alright, a fair amount of this we should be able to put in the item bag. Yeah, don't have room for that, but that's okay. Okay, mantis leg. Don't have room for thin skin, huh? Don't have a stack of that in there? Okay, I think that's everything. And we've nearly 100%ed this. All we have to do is explore this little area. Oh right, it's that little weird 2x2 two two or square space. Okay, now we only have to explore part of the next map. And we'll be done. Oh, right, this one. I say all we have to do, but that might be a job. Ridge, do you have any insta moves left? No. He has not gained a level since then. Oof. Uh, okay, what's going to be the fastest way to do this? That's a bit of a journey to get there, but, uh, well, I guess we don't have much of a choice. Grief, get out of here. Oh, 
Okay. Log on to us. Oh no. Okay, good. I didn't pass through a one-way wall. I almost did, but not quite. There it is. Nice job, Grisa. Nice job, Akari. My frontliner is on the ball. Okay, exploring the rest of this is proving not to be too bad after all. Not too bad. I feared it might be a little more difficult than this, but no, nope, this is going pretty smooth and easy. How do we get into this center area? Okay, like that, do it. And easy win. Another level for Grisa. She's reached level 20. Mortal Strike. All right. It's luck, you say. No, it isn't. Okay, an already activated magic key. How do we get in there? Okay, like that. Get out of my way! You know what? Requiem their faces. Teach them the insolence of their ways. Okay, it wasn't even necessary. Okay, now we just have this area in the south that we need to explore. And then we're done. Alright, if we're in Wendy's inventory now, we need to do some more inventory management. A harpy wing. Interesting. Broken staff can definitely be dropped. What about this cat bell? Oh, an ancient coin can go in the item bag. Alright, cat bell. Null affinity. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Maybe it means your racial affinities are overridden, and maybe your um, alignment affinities, so that you just don't get pluses or minuses with anybody. Maybe. Uh, it gives accuracy and evasion. That's pretty good. Among my frontliners, who has the worst accuracy? 21, 16, 13. So, uh, I think that even though Radar has the lowest, I think I want to give this to Akari. She hits harder than Radar, of course. Uh, who had this? Okay, Ridge. 
give to Akari. Okay, never mind. Inventory management, grr. Akari. Oh, there's an unidentified material in here. There's several, in fact. Okay, give those to the item bag. Now. No, not use. Okay, good. I was afraid it would break or something. There. Okay, um, so can you equip this? Oh, it would replace your cloak. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Cloak is giving defense one. I feel like accuracy and evasion one is better than defense one. Go ahead and try to equip it. Uh, can I give that cloak to anybody else? Black cloak plus three, warrior ring plus two. She has a cloak. Maybe let's give it to Cecily. Here you go, Cecily. Have a hand-me-down from Akari. Never mind, she can't use it. Who can? Scions also can't. I guess this is a worthless item now. Because I think uh, everybody who could equip it has that or something better. Oh well. Weapon. That's exciting. Finished equipment. Eight side shuriken minus four. Sounds like something only a ninja could use. We have no ninjas in our party and probably never will. Yeah, ninja and kunoichi, which are actually two separate classes for some reason. Ninja being male, kunoichi being female. There is a cool story that uh, Japanese friends taught me when I was in Japanese Conversation Club about where Kunoichi comes from, the word. But I can't really explain it verbally because it involves the strokes for the word for female. But basically, if you draw the strokes for the word for female one at a time, they, they correspond to hiragana and katakana for ku, no, uh, the hiragana for ku, the katakana for no, and then the kanji for ichi. And so you get... And so it turns into the word kunoichi. And that's where it comes from. The word for female ninja. So that's pretty cool. But uh, without being able to visually describe it. If anybody watching this actually knows Japanese, they're nodding along and being like, Oh, that's cool. But uh, if you don't know Japanese, what I just said makes no sense whatsoever, so just don't worry about it. Triple Dango! I guess let's hang on to it, just in case it turns out to be a quest item. Any random thing could be a quest item, even a tea table. Apparently he decided that the tea... I love how the principal was basically evaluating whether it was a good table by flipping it over. So his evaluation of whether a table is good or not is is how how flippable it is, I suppose, or how well it flips, which is pretty hilarious, you got to admit. I, I kind of like that principle. All right, so we 100%ed that, that, that. We didn't 100%ed that because 100%ing that would be stupid. And we 100%ed that. Good enough. And now we're at Cape Duquette, and we're at the end of an episode. Um... I may have to backtrack to Ranslate to take care of our inventory issues. But then we can fast track the Cape Duquette again, presumably, and do the labyrinth between here and Boast House, and presumably that's the one with the missing student. I guess we can check that real quick. Boast Cave. Was that the one where the missing student is? Quest. No, Toe House. Where the heck was Toe House? Have we... Have we already been on Toe House? Maybe we have. Which one was it? Oh, good lord, I don't remember it. Nothing on here is called Toe House. So if it's not this one, it's either the one between Boast House and Skygate, or it's one we already did, like the one from Ranslate to Zaskia or Zaskia to Howler. Well, I guess we're gonna have to figure that out, but... First, we're going to do Labyrinth between here and Boast House. 
and I'll take care of my inventory issues off screen. So that's what's coming up next. I'll see you then.